Listen to this. Want to know how that music came into my life? You're about to find out. I'm Genevieve Randall. This is season two of the Plain Story podcast. Gorgeous. Let's start with me in a car. Okay. Will we were on this. You know what? Seriously, this is so close to work. I passed this. I don't know. I'm not going to be in there long because okay. this drive okay. was so short. I could have just walked. It's got music it's notes on it. Yeah. I wonder who made it. And and it's got scissors. It's eight o'clock at night. A beautiful <laughs> spring night. I'm with this guy, Eric. He plays the upright bass, and he's lugging it and me to a barber shop to hear some music. You'll hear more about Eric later. Let me tell you about this building. It's in a residential area, and this is a small bungalow-type building painted in happy yellows and blues. There's plate glass windows on the front. The open sign that hangs in them is off, but what comes from inside sounds inviting. This is Golden Scissor. It's a barber shop, but tonight they aren't cutting hair. Oh, I hear music already. Inside, half the room is covered in mirrors with a counter for scissors, shears, and hair care products. There's some couches and chairs that make up a waiting area with world news on the TV. Two barber chairs sit empty, waiting for their next customers. But in the far corner, there's another area cordoned off by low seated futons. There are speakers set up, cords running everywhere, microphones, keyboards, and audio gear paraphernalia every place. Hi, guys. How you guys doing? This is where Golden Scissor becomes Golden Studio, an off hours jam space. Eric and I are there to meet the man behind this unique place, Hassan Khalil. Only Hassan isn't there yet. We're greeted by a stylish-looking man in his 30s. I'm Ziad. Ziad, nice Mr. to Z. meet you. It's easier. Ziad, who stopped playing when we came in, and Arkan, Ryan, how are you doing? Good. Brother, how are you doing? who had been singing, he's smiling and nodding politely. My eyes are immediately drawn toward a showstopper in the room. Who's, whose is this? That's mine. And what is it? <laughs> Electric saws. An electric saws. I'd seen them before, but couldn't come up with the name. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. <sighs> that is gorgeous. This instrument is a point of pride, I can tell. And it should be. It has a bowl-shaped teardrop body, and the neck is long. There are 23 frets, and it is inlaid with a shiny silver vine and flower pattern that climbs from the body up the entire neck. It looks like a mandolin. Yeah, we used to call it- S-A-Z, saz, is an instrument we'll be hearing a lot. Right now, we're waiting on Hassan. He's running a bit late because he's concerned with being a good host and isn't about to show up empty-handed. Do you want coffee? He's by the Starbucks. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ziad sets up to play with Eric and Arkan. Oh, you want to plug it in? Yeah, you want to plug it in? Sure. There's too many wires here. <laughs> Hassan comes in bright and energetic and apologizing. 
His hands are full, balancing a basket of fruits and cups of coffee for everyone. Hi. Hi. Are you fresh? Oh my gosh, that smells good. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm Genevieve. And my name is Hassan. Hassan, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I've been looking forward to meeting you. Oh. <laughs> he has a Yankees baseball cap on, backwards, and jeans with designs on the pockets. His bright eyes are, well, they're just kind eyes. And he sports a neatly trimmed beard, as a barber should, I guess. It's a Thursday night, and I've got a live show tomorrow morning. So tempting, that coffee. I'll just take a melatonin later. <laughs> Something is about to happen, and I want to be a part of it. Have a smoke. We head outside before playing. It's dark by now, but these are the hours of musicians, right? Well, thank you guys all for coming today. Yad was a translator. Oh, really? You're a translator? In Iraq, yeah. Uh, there are little reminders that Lincoln isn't a place Hassan or Ziad chose to be. Lincoln just happened to them. I want to know why and how, but now isn't the time. I'm wondering what they think about this blonde guy, Eric, and his gigantic bass taking up a corner in the barbershop. What did you think when Eric first called you or contacted you? When he first came, I mean, I, I knew he was a musician when I saw him. I thought, I thought it was me, he'd play music. <laughs> just by looking at him? Actually, I just figured, I thought he'd play music. Just, yeah. I don't know why, but I, I had that feeling. But he called me and he just, I don't know where he's. Showed up here. Yeah, he showed up right here, yeah. And now here I am, a total stranger, just showing up. Inside, we start settling in for the music. Uh -huh. <laughs> so much feedback. So if you did, like, um... The korma call? Yeah. Eric is in the corner with his bass, Hassan seated at the keyboards adjacent from Ziad, who has the electric saz across his lap, and Arkan sits in wait. He clutches the mic and looks eager to sing immediately, but he has to be patient through these awkward moments. Because though Eric and Hassan have been friends for a while, Eric is a classically trained musician from Lincoln, and Hassan and Ziad are self-taught musicians originally from Iraq. People say music is a universal language. It is, but cultures use notes differently to build musical sentences. Did you, did you show Genevieve your, your quarter tone uh, frets? Quarter tones. When we talk about music, it really is like learning a language. There's learning the words, that's like playing the actual notes, but like a language, there's also learning the cultural pronunciations, like rolling your R's or elongating your O's. If you've been doing those things your whole life, it's as natural as breathing. If you haven't, well, it's hard to do. So much feedback. So if you did, like... The differences um, between the classic Western or European music that Eric is used to and the Middle Eastern music of Hassan and Ziad aren't just about the instruments they use, like the saws, but also about how those instruments are designed to speak. Yeah, and then I hear those little pitches in there that I'm like, wait, what is that? Pitch? Hear that? Ziad is using that long neck of the saws and all those frets to play notes between the Western notes. If you think of a piano, there are places where there are two adjacent white keys. The Western classical world, for the most part, doesn't think any other note exists between those two white keys. However, for much of the world, there are. Imagine notes down there in the cracks of a keyboard. These are the quarter tones, and they sound a little bit out of tune to a Western-trained ear. But a lot of our song and music, you have to pull out quarter tones. In fact, Hassan's keyboard can be programmed to play these quarter tones. The D to make okay. a certain... Uh, okay, so play it with and without. Oh, see? I see. Yep, yep. A quarter tone brings it so back, yeah. Right. We sometimes do it even more. So it brings it down. It brings it down. So, uh, yeah. That's so if you were cool. to play it in the scale... If your ear is trained in Western music, Middle Eastern music can sound out of tune. Yeah. The musical language Eric is trying to learn means he needs to unlearn some of the training he grew up with. 
And in this case, his talent of reading music and seeing if it is played right can hinder him. It can be as awkward as being in another country where you don't speak the language. I think you can hear it here as they begin. It sounds like a clunky conversation, but it doesn't take long and they start to get it. Because Eric is playing a fretless instrument, a bass, with strings you can just slide along against the neck, finding quarter tones can be done as opposed to a piano where those keys will never exist. I'm starting to get mesmerized. This is super cool for me to see. I'm glad I drank that coffee. Eric has been watching me the whole time, smiling as he plays from over in the corner, like, do you get it now? I do. Eric is trying to bridge the divides we hear about in the news all the time. Only, because he's a musician, he wants to start with music. Let's start by making connections using what we love, and then worry about all that other stuff later. We can cross the cultural divide when we get to it. For now, Let's just jam. This is awesome. Electric saws, keyboards, Eric carving away on this huge bass. And I'm thinking to myself, come on, Genevieve, this whole scene, this little world has been right around the corner from you this whole time. How did I, of all people, let this slip under my radar? On the next episode of the Plain Story Podcast, I get a surprise gift. Thank you for letting me borrow this. It's been really fun. You can have it, honestly. Really? Yeah. And with it comes a musical challenge. There we go. Good, yeah. Hold on. Plus, we hear more electric saws, keyboards, singing, and quarter tones. I know you can't resist that. Plain Story Podcast, The Sound of Home, is produced by NET Nebraska. I'm your host, Genevieve Randall. Our producer is Brian Seiferlein. And our associate producer is Monica Starr. Our field audio is by Emily Kreutz, Nathan Todd Hunter, and Andy Bigham. We had editing from Alex Epperson and mixing by Nathan Todd Hunter. Our graphics are by Joe McMullen. Bill Anderson is our radio network director. Chad Davis is our executive producer. Special thanks to Golden Studio, Eric Higgins, and the Lincoln Crossroads Music Festival. See you on the next episode. Mm-hmm.